Hello and welcome back for our weekly lives at a slightly different hour today. So we're running uh, a little late today and the reason is... Uh, well, first of all, let's comment on our casual attire. attire. We just finished working out in, no our, in a little home gym. <laughs> so today we did chest, triceps. Tricep. I did uh, triceps and abs, you did chest, chest and, and triceps. triceps. So we're not that sweaty, but we're, you know, cash because we just finished working out. We work out more or less around this time, almost every afternoon. Try to do it for about an hour sometimes, you know, 35 minutes, you're like, oh, I'm done. You know, different motivation. I didn't want to work out today. I got home, I, was, I did three cases, I had meetings, which is why we're late. But anyway, so we did work out and she we did made, convince me. When we made our son work out with us as well, we have him working out with us twice a week. We work out four times a week and we have him working out twice a week because it is a family affair. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about lessons of obesity and what a disaster is becoming in this country. You got to get your kids to eat right. You got to get your kids to exercise because the bad habits build upon themselves. I mean, they love their computers. They love being yeah. online, but you got to drag them out, make them do stuff, make it get physical so they begin to enjoy exercise, etc., etc. So why are we late? We are late because today at one o'clock, I had a meeting at the hospital where we did what we call a mock survey for centers of excellence in bariatric surgery. So I went around to the ER, to the ICU, et cetera, preparing them for our real survey, which is next week. Okay. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, a surveyor, so I'll be late then too. Yes. <laughs> so a surveyor comes to the hospital, evaluates our program, evaluates our equipment, our results, our outcomes. Why is that important to you guys? Being certified a center of excellence means you have an outside institution, the American College of Surgeons or the Surgical Review Corporation, that looks at your program and makes certain that the equipment, the staffing, the quality, the outcomes are there. If they are, then they certify you as a center of excellence, and then you can you know, tell the world we're a center of excellence. It also requires that every single one of our cases be submitted the results, the outcomes, how long were they were in the hospital, were there any complications, what were the results, their weight loss. So we get judged to the quality of our program and compared to every other center of excellence in the country and we get a report card saying you're outstanding or you need improvement or you're perfectly statistically within the normal centers of excellence. Mind you, in gastric bypass, we always get several outstanding because our gastric bypass results are so good. We've never had a needs improvement result because we've always been either at the top or right in the middle of all the centers of excellence. If you're considering bariatric surgery, if you're low risk, you don't need a center of excellence. But if your surgeon participates in a center of excellence, it's kind of a seal of approval. You know that they have the approach, the attitude, the team, and the outcomes to be certified. Now, we practice at three hospitals. One is, a, actually two are certified centers of excellence. One isn't, which is the low risk. But the fact that I'm the director of a center of excellence kind of lets you know that I've Checked all the boxes, crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, have outcomes, have equipment, etc. So that's what I was doing today. That's why our life is a little late today and it will be also next Wednesday. Because then we have the real site survey to measure the quality of our program. Yes, exactly. So we, we will put up a little survey later on to see if you actually prefer the 12.30 time or the 6 o'clock time. We could do it either way. Yeah. Whatever is more convenient, whatever more engagement we get. Right. Because at the end of the day, it is for you guys. It's for you guys. She tortures me with this thing because she tells me it's for you guys. So. Okay, so we do have a few questions from last week. So okay. we'll get to those questions. So we have a patient that wants to know after surgery, how long, and she has several questions after that. So how long after surgery can you fly? Okay, so the classic recommendation is six weeks, especially for a long trip. Now, mind you, we operate from a lot of folks from out of town. And obviously they're not gonna stay here six weeks, so they're gonna fly back within a week. The key to flying is you're going to be sitting in a restricted space without the ability to walk a lot, sometimes for a couple of hours, especially if the flight is longer. After about three or four hours, the flight is longer. What do we do with those folks? We give them the blood thinner. So during that first week and right up to the point that they get back home, we give them the shots of blood thinner because that decreases the risk of a blood clot by being in the air, you know, airplane seat, not being able to really walk. 
After six weeks, the risk of a blood clot really has pretty much disappeared. So flying is very safe. Now flying after surgery is not an issue of the altitude or the pressurization or any of that stuff. It's about the limited mobility and we don't want you to have a blood clot. People say to me all the time, well then I'll just drive. That's actually Same not thing. better because <laughs> you're actually in the car more hours to get to wherever, Georgia, we operate from folks from all over the place. So again, if you're gonna drive more than a couple of hours, we use the blood thinners during the period that you're gonna be traveling to decrease the rate of blood clot. But the classic recommendation is six weeks, especially if it's a vacation. You really want to be out of the woods, make sure you're well hydrated. So we recommend six weeks for flying. Yes. Okay, and how long to get sun? So, sun is always good. Now, sun on the wounds can cause them to get darker. The scar can mark more. So we want you to avoid getting sun on the wounds for several months. You can get sun in the rest of your body by either covering the wounds, putting really, really high protection on them, 70, percent you know blocking factor etc but you don't want to get a tan or a sun burn on fresh wounds because they will hyperpigment but you can be out in the sun within a week now at the beginning remember the sun makes us sweat more you gotta hydrate more you're not able to drink a whole bunch of fluid at the same time so if you're gonna go out in the sun get the bottle sip 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 constantly how long to get in the pool or the beach We've touched upon this before. The classic recommendation is six weeks. Now, what is the real requirement for the wounds to be truly sealed? If you get underwater, be it a pool, be it the beach, that water can push into a wound if it's open. Many of our pools, many of our beaches have bacteria in them. If those bacteria sip into an open wound, you can get a really bad wound infection. Sometimes a life-threatening wound infection. So never get in standing water, pool, beach, canal, whatever, if you have an open wound, any open wound, but definitely a surgical wound. We're pretty certain that by about six weeks, all the wounds will be healed. But if you look at your wound and there's a little spot that's open or a little spot that has not normal skin over it, you're not ready for the pool. Completely healed, the classic recommendation is six weeks. And the last part to this question is, when can you have sexual intercourse? <laughs> this is a, people are always embarrassed, but this is an important question in life. I mean, you know, <laughs> the answer is whenever you're comfortable. Whenever you feel comfortable, it can be a week, 10 days, two weeks. When your wounds are comfortable, your belly's comfortable, it's fine to you know have relationships, not a problem. Good job. Okay. Next. I get an A. You get an A. Um, okay, how do I order the vitamins? So again, the vitamins, you can order them online. You can order them online through our website, which is newlifehealthandfitness.com. So it's the name for the nutritionistoffice.com. And right on there, you're gonna see a, a tab to shop. You're gonna see the vitamins and all of the supplements that we have, um, except for the protein X, because that's a liquid. All the other vitamins and supplements you can order through there and we will ship them to you. You can pay right online, set, put in all your information right there and we'll take care of it. You can also order by the phone, on the phone, but you can order on the website without a problem. By the way, why is it called New Life? I came up with that because really you're going to start a new life. You truly are. If you have weight loss surgery and you have severe, significant weight loss, it's really a new you, a new life. So. And what do we want out of your life? Health. And, and what you guys gotta do, the fitness parts, go to the gym. So go to the gym. Part so, of the reason it was called a new life, health and fitness. So the health obviously was the surgery and the nutritionist and the vitamins. And the fitness part, we, we actually had a gym. We used to own a gym, <laughs> a commercial gym for our patients only. It was gorgeous. It was like 5,000 square feet, uh, all the equipment you can imagine. But guess what? <laughs> you not, guys didn't come. <laughs> not enough of you guys went to make it viable. We had the gym for like, what, 10 years? Five years? Seven years? We had the gym for five years. Five years? Five years. But honestly, not enough folks yeah. joined, so it wasn't like really viable. So then we went to, okay, we'll close the gym, and then we'll advise you to go to a commercial gym or a trainer or a home gym like we have, or even minimal equipment. You can exercise with minimal equipment. It takes a little ingenuity, but trust me. There's instructions on yes. YouTube, TikTok, everywhere on how to exercise with minimal equipment. Very good exercise, both resistance and cardio exercises with minimal equipment. You can do it. You just have to have the motivation. 
one hour a day, three or four times a week. If you look at time-wise, calendar-wise, in our lives, one hour a day is really not that much of a stretch guy. I'm pretty busy surgeon, I have emergency, all sorts of things coming up, and I manage to do it for the most part. So I really, really encourage you, new life, health and fitness. fitness. Yes, and um, we even had personal trainers, and we even had, we had different classes, and we had our machines, and it was a lot spinning. of fun. I used to teach spinning and salsa aerobics. And I loved it, but honestly, I, I got a point where we would have this gorgeous gym and there'd be like three or four patients working out. And everybody said, well, take a commercial to the public. And I was like, no, I really wanted this. I don't want my patients. And let's be honest, at the beginning, you're self-conscious because you're still having, mm -hmm. you know, gotten your weight down to a point. And I don't want my patients in a, in a commercial gym feeling, which we all do. I mean, you go to one of those gyms where everybody's like, ah, you're like, eh. And I wanted it, but we couldn't make it viable because not enough of you guys work out. So I but keep the, nagging. But those of you that did join us in the gym, we did become an awesome family and we're still in contact with a lot of you. And it was such an amazing time. It was really one of the things that, that, that drove me to really get into fitness and, and make it a part of my life. I know he mentioned an hour a day, three times a week. Honestly, to start, I would start a little slower. Um, just to, to make it a habit. You need to make it a habit and then once you make it a habit and you become successful and you start seeing that your body change, you are going to automatically want to do it more and more and more. There's going to be days like this week that we were a little eh, but we've got it done. I've done two days, you've done three days. And so really 20 minutes, if you can spare 20 minutes, which honestly, we can spare 20 minutes. We're always scrolling, we're always doing things. So 20 minutes, a little bit of exercise, it will make a world of difference. And I promise you, if I win the lotto, right after I buy the Lamborghini, I'm gonna open a gym for you guys, free, it'll be part. <laughs> so we're gonna start playing the lotto. Yes. We're never gonna win if I don't buy the tickets. <laughs> so we have a comment, she says, this is week five for me and I am ready to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Be prudent, be <laughs> prudent. Like I had a call the other day, I don't wanna out patients, I obviously HIPAA compliance and everything, but it's like, they told me I could have, uh, what was it? Um, chicken and beans. Mm -hmm. So I made a nice chicken and bean combination and I ate it and I threw up. I'm like, of course you make concrete. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to eat the chicken and then maybe a few hours later eat some beans, but you're not supposed to mm -hmm. concrete it all up. Anything that ends up being really mushy with meats and things, ends up being really sticky and it sticks in the connection there, anastomosis. And then if it sticks there, it blocks it. So all the other secretions, all the other food can't get down. You get pain and colic and mm -hmm. it comes out. So yeah, you're ready to eat, but be prudent. Small amounts, shoot well one food at a time till you make sure that food is well tolerated. Yeah, I mean, at week six, you're gonna get some new foods to eat. So. Your appointment with a nutritionist should be coming up and she'll give you tips and guidance how to help um, when you feel that anxiety that you want to chew. Because at the end of the day, we really all want to chew on that food. You don't want to eat that soft, mushy stuff. Nobody does. But you just got to stick it out a little longer and you're going to get there. You're going to start eating real food soon. Right. And, so. and people say, you know, I have a friend who had surgery with another surgeon and they ate sooner because the technique is different. There are surgeons who make the pouch, the sleeve, the connections bigger. Mm -hmm. That lets you eat sooner, yeah. but long term, that is not the optimal. It's better to go smaller, tighter, smaller connections because long term, the weight loss and the complications will be lower. Mm -hmm. So in our program, it's definitely my technique. You're gonna go slower than in other programs, but long term, your success rate and your likelihood of a weird complication called retrograde into susception is much lower because I make the connections tight and small. So we're gonna to try to get to the questions that are coming in, but we don't have our assistant with us today because we're after hours. So yeah, we have to read. <laughs> so we'll try our best, but you know, this is, this is not our forte. We, we, we do better at, at, yeah, our, so at our real I'm trying job. to read that years ago, I had you operate on me, I had a gastric <laughs> bypass. It was you and another doctor, I believe. So yeah, I've had a couple of associates over the years. Uh, they've gone on to other jobs, to other things. When people get 
kind of good. They want to be their own director, their own boss. So, you know, it moves. So I've had a couple of associates over the last, you know, 10 years or so. Right now. 20 years. 20. But, well, <laughs> we didn't have associates for many, many years. And no, then we, we did. We had Pombo Pablo Oh, that's right. <laughs> like, we did. See? We opened the gym with Dr. Pombo. So I'm, I'm learning a little Latin. So I'm going to tell you guys. Ego sum senilis. No, not see now. Old. I am old. Ego sum senilis. I learned that phrase today. I am old. So she's my peripheral brain. Reminds me. Okay. So we actually had a, um, a question about support groups. So they were, you know, we, we have the support group after surgery. But the question was, with all the misinformation there is out there, is there a support group prior to surgery? So we do not have a support group prior to surgery, but it's kind of the reason we came up with this. This is one of the reasons we are doing these weekly lives so that patients that are thinking of having surgery or patients that have already had surgery and forgot some of the information we gave you guys can ask these questions and can go back to the lives and listen to the explanation of, of the different questions. We're also posting them um, on our page, important questions, we're posting them there so that you can listen to them, listen to the answers. Um, there is a lot of misinformation out there. So if you have a question, if you know somebody that is gonna have surgery that has a question, you can just send us a DM with a question if you're not able to make it on the live and we'll, we'll try our best to, to get to all the questions, but uh, so it is important. I just read a question. Me operé hace un año, me debo hacer una endoscopía. So, una endoscopía por rutina después de cirugía bariátrica no es necesaria. La persona confunde en endoscopía del estómago, del pouch, con endoscopía del colon. Todo el mundo que lleva a los, a los 50 años, quizás un poquito antes, se debe hacer una colonoscopía, se la hace cada 10 años. Una endoscopía del estómago por rutina después de cirugía bariátrica no es necesaria. Si hay síntomas, dolor, sangramiento, pensamos que hay una úlcera, entonces cuando mandamos la endoscopía dirigida a los síntomas, endoscopía por arriba, por rutina, después de cirugía bariátrica, no es necesaria. Do I need to have an endoscopy after bariatric surgery as a routine in a year or two? No. Now don't confuse that with colonoscopy. Colonoscopy you should have when, by the time you get to 50, and then you should have it every 10 years. Upper endoscopy without symptoms, not necessary. As a routine to monitor the pouch or whatever, not necessary, not useful information, discomfort, expense for no reason. Now, symptoms, throwing up blood, pain, possible ulcer. Then we do a diagnostic endoscopy to see what's going on, to see if we have an ulcer that we need to treat, etc., etc. You get into the hospital with severe pain, the CAT scan is normal, I'm gonna order an endoscopy. That is a diagnostic looking for something because you have a symptom. I'm feeling great, routine, I had surgery two years, three years, four years ago, I need an endoscopy? No, not necessary. So we had another question about um, payment plans and how to pay for the surgery. So yes, um, we work with um, several finance companies. We work with a medical finance company called Care Credit and United Medical Credit. We also take um, all, all credit cards. And then um, also a lot of patients are applying for personal loans because sometimes you can get a slightly um, better rate on the personal loans than on the medical loans. Um, the, the rates have gone a little higher on the medical loans. But yes, we have coordinators in the office. If you're interested, you can DM right here through the Sosa Way um, your name, your phone number, and one of the coordinators um, will call you and explain the whole process. We'll make sure that you're a candidate. We'll explain the different programs, the different prices, and the different financing options. But yes, we have multiple financing options um, to help the patients. And then along those lines, then we had another question about somatoside. Well, let me jump mm -hmm. on, on your thing. So we also try, if you're a little short on the financing, we also try to help. We'll give you, we'll give you financing 0%, but it can't be a lot of money. Cause let's be honest, some people don't pay it back and I need to pay my employees and the rent. But yeah, we do give people a promissory note. If, if you're short, you know, talk to your coordinator, a thousand, two thousand dollars and, and we can work it out. We can give you a promissory note, 0% financing, and then we'll pray you pay us back because that's <laughs> how I pay the rent. But we can help a little too. We can't finance the whole thing because in-house, yeah. In house because we don't have that kind of reserves, but we can help a little. So putting all those things together, 
usually folks can afford to, you know, go ahead and have the surgery. Semi good type question. Hey, we also had a semi good type question about um, uh, payment plans. So for the smaller amounts, the, the the things that go through New Life Health and Fitness, like semi good type, they, we have all those same options, but then we also have Afterpay. And Afterpay is um, through the through Square, which is the credit card processing service. And so they have a new service called Afterpay. And then we also have um, a service through Affirm, which is also, it's for smaller amounts. So it's three years, they'll give you zero interest. So we, we have a lot of options for all of our programs from surgery, all the way to semaglutide, all the way to nutrition visits. Um, we will help you however we can. We will help you with discounts, specials, percentages off. You know, we will do our best. Um, obviously, there is a bottom line because we have to pay the hospital. We have to pay for the products. We have to pay for anesthesia, uh, all of those things. So there is a bottom line, but we try our best. Um, we've never raised our prices. We, we've lowered them sometimes just to, to help. And, and depending on the case, um, we try our best to make sure that the patients that need surgery that we help them achieve the surgery. That goes the same for the nutritional visits. Um, and that also goes the same for semaglutide um, and all of the other components that we have. Yes? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, we, we try to help. Philosophically, I have, you know, I mean, we all know what different bariatric surgeons charge. Mm -hmm. We all know it, we're in the business. Whatever business you're in, you know your competition, mm -hmm. you know the market with your Coca-Cola versus Pepsi-Cola, whatever. I have always had a philosophy and I've always maintained it. We sit in the middle of the cost. There are always surgeons programs are going to be more expensive than us on purpose because mm -hmm. I don't go as expensive as some of the other people. There are always going to be surgeons that are cheaper than us. And you know, if that, if you're just only looking for cheap, be very careful because sometimes mm -hmm. like in say in Spanish, lo barato sale caro. You want quality at a reasonable price. We're not going to be the cheapest. We're not going to compete with Mexico. I've had patients walk in and say, if I go to Mexico, it'll be this much. Can you do it for that much? And I'm like, not even begin. Can we compete with the prices of Mexico? It's just impossible. Just the way our system works. But we try to always stay in the middle. We've always, we haven't jacked it up. When demand goes up, we don't really jack it up. We stay in the, in, in the middle. There are po folks who are family, friends, etc. who will give some breaks to when we can. We're very flexible, but there is always a bottom line. There And, and the obvious, clear bottom line, I'm going to Mexico for this much, can you do it? No, it's impossible. Yeah. So, do you have a referral program? I have a lot of people always asking me about the surgery. Well, we don't have a referral program per se, um, but we, we do work with our patients that send us a lot of patients, so like, you would ideally work with the coordinator that helped you. And then if you send her a few patients, she was, she's gonna give you some stuff for free. She'll work with you with what you need. You need a nutritional visit, you need you want an IV. So we do have different components in our program that then we can kind of offer and work with you. you it's, know. it's the family philosophy. Mm -hmm. If you help us grow, we, but it's not, I'm gonna buy you off so you can tell people to come to me philosophy. Right. I don't believe that. I don't believe in paying somebody to send a patient to me. But I do believe if you're part of a group or fighter family and you've referred, A, if you refer several people, we're gonna give breaks to some of those people, family, friends, etc. B, you need IVs, you need you know other stuff that we provide, we're gonna give it to you either at cost or maybe even below cost, because we want to be involved. Will I pay for referrals? No. Good point. Um, why don't you offer the balloon? Because it's a waste of money. <laughs> it's an absolute waste of money. So let's think about it. your stomach. It, it, I mean, you can see pictures or whatever. It kind of looks like a jug of milk, like the smaller jug of milk, not the full gallon. <laughs> so you can eat all that food. Now you shouldn't because you really feel satisfied before you fill that whole stomach. But we can fill it and some people do. Now the idea is I'm going to put a balloon in there to take up most of the space. So when you eat a little bit of food, then that little bit of food with the balloon already in there is gonna give you satiety. You can't eat anymore, your stomach can't expand anymore. On paper, it's a great idea. A, that balloon cannot stay there forever because it will roll through the wall, cause bleeding, a perforation. So it has to be removed. When does it have to remove? The FDA has said six months. Okay, so during that time, did your stomach shrink? No, your balloon was taking up most of the space. You lost 20, 30 pounds. I removed the balloon, which by law I have to. Guess what happens? You're incredibly hungry and the stomach is even bigger than it was before. 
So you're gonna start eating a lot more. So, and as I tell folks, if that balloon was two or $300 and you used it every couple of years, okay, but the balloon's six to $7,000. At six months, you gotta rip it out and throw it away. And you gotta and, pay for it taking it out. And then you're gonna get all the weight back because <laughs> the studies are clear, you gain all the weight back. So where is the balloon useful? And I always tell everybody, it's a joke, but it's kind of real. You're gonna have your wedding in, in six months a year and you wanna lose 20, 30 pounds so you look amazing in your tux or in your wedding dress. Okay, put the balloon. You know it's not permanent, you know it's temporary, you're gonna spend a bunch of money on it, but it's gonna get you there. Now mind you, semaglutide has now replaced that indication because it's amazing for 20, 30 pounds. But doing the balloon for permanent weight loss does not work and it is very expensive and people go it has and no it has risk. risk yeah it has risk i've had patients almost bleed to death from other surgeons putting the balloon we've had patients with perforations that we had to reoperate to fix the balloon so it's not that risk is zero expensive some risk not long-term effective it's a waste of time i wouldn't do it yeah and um, one of the other questions i just saw come up is how often do you, they have to see you for checkups after surgery so we have a, uh, the classic plan. At a week, I wanna see you to look at the wounds to make sure you're not having a major complication, you're not dehydrated. I can talk to you for 30 seconds and know you're not dehydrated. And you know, if you are, then IVs or go to the hospital. At a month, I wanna see that your weight loss is on track. I want to give you instructions on exercise. I want to make sure you're seeing the nutritionist. At three months, again, we're judging that your weight loss is on track. Do we need to add, subtract, anything like that? At six months, you should have way significant, lost significant amount of weight. Now then, between nine months and a year, we're gonna do the one year evaluation. If you had a sleeve and you weren't too big, you pretty much should be done. If you had a gastric, you still have some to go. This is where I'm gonna nag about more exercise, getting rid of calories, getting rid of carbs. And then once a year, why once a year? We wanna make sure you're taking your vitamins. We wanna make sure you're not regaining weight. Because if you regain weight beginning and we go right there with either semaglutide or diet, you gain 10 pounds, we can beat 10 pounds down in a month or two or three. You don't see me for five years, and now you've gained 70 pounds. We're gonna try to help you, but now we have a major mission. So long-term, I wanna see you once a year. And I've said here in the podcast before, the folks that keep that appointment, long-term end up not gaining weight. Maybe it's because they're dedicated, maybe it's our advice is unclear. But if you keep your appointments, your chance for long-term success is higher then if you disappear and never see us again for five years until you have a problem. And if you live out of town, we ask, we want to see you in person for that first visit, and then we'll do the rest of the visits over the phone if you're right. from out of town. Virtual. But if you live in town, we want to see your pretty face coming to see us so that we can weigh yeah, you, people tell see me. you, and, and make yeah. sure you're doing people well. People go, I want to fly out two days after surgery. No, because all the complications are going to happen. All the big complications, all the things I need to fix are going to happen that first week. And I don't want you going back to, I don't know, let's throw a name out there, uh, Atlanta. Oh, Atlanta. <laughs> and well, Atlanta's a big city, they have that's, lots of hospitals, stuff, but you know, like a little, little town in Ocala or something, at five days you have a complication, and now it's like, okay, what, what do I do? You gotta come back down, fly. No, so in a week, if I send you away in a week, back home, 99.9, .9, you're gonna be just fine. All right, so what, the last question was, can you reverse the gastric bypass? Yes, and it's been done. So many years ago, the people were very skinny and everybody's, oh, they successfully learned how to eat, they're now healthy, they exercise, you know, they want to eat a little more, they want not to take the vitamins so much, not to have any more dumping because they beat obesity, let's reverse the gastric bypass. Guess what happened? They gain all the way back. Boom, 100 pounds of weight regain. So can we do it? Yes. Do we do it? No. It is incredibly rare to have a condition, a surgical condition that we have to reverse a gastric bypass. Potentially it could happen with certain things in your guts, with cancers, whatever, but it's incredibly rare. So as a routine, we can reverse a gastric. We don't do it because you haven't beat obesity. We take the tool away, it comes right back. All right, so we're almost out of time, but do you have a tip for us today? Did you come up with one? Uh, oh my goodness, between, <laughs> between how busy it's been today, it's I, fine. I, I really didn't come up with like a, a good tip. I mean, uh, the exercise tip is, is a very good tip, you know. Always, always a good tip is to exercise. Stay Absolutely. hydrated, especially summer is going to be hot. Especially if you're early post-op in summer, 
Go outside for walks when the sun is down yes. and make sure you sip, 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 sip your water constantly. I would say that is, you know, for our patients that have had surgery, that's probably one of the most important things is to, to make sure that you're staying hydrated. Because um, even for us that haven't had surgery, it is so hot. It is hard to stay hydrated. People say to me, I think I'm dehydrated. I'm not sure I go. No, you are. <laughs> if you think it, you are. If you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. You're supposed to prevent even getting thirsty right after surgery. I'm really thirsty right now. <laughs> Frequent, let's <laughs> have the martini, right? There, there. <laughs> Frequent small sips in the first few weeks. And one get, once again, water is not the best thing to drink right after surgery. The best thing to drink right after surgery is something that has electrolytes, sodium, potassium. Now, I don't, again, I'm not supposed to mention brands because I'm really not marketing these folks. But something like a Gatorade, like a Powerade, it has sugar sodium, sugar-free, sugar minimal free. calories, but it has sodium, potassium. So those drinks are better than just water, which replaces your water, but doesn't replace your salt from sweat, et cetera, et cetera. So in the beginning, when you're not really eating food, drinking the right thing, a mineral electrolyte-containing mm -hmm. solution. I could throw Pedialyte out there, although yeah, that doesn't taste different so good. drops and crystal light and stuff that you can put in the water. That's so the key, all, electrolytes. Yeah, very important. So thank you guys for joining us. And um, Let us know if you like this time because we can always adjust. Yeah. Um, next week we will be on at this time. Right. Um, so after that, we'll see if we go back to 1230 or we stay on at this time. So Maybe twice a time. day. Maybe you want to see me more often. Twice a day. No. I don't want to see you more often. <laughs> You're stuck with, you are stuck with me. All right, guys. Love seeing you. Love getting your questions. Love seeing old patients on here, new patients on here. So keep on sending your questions and we'll be here to answer them. Right? Right. Have a great Have night. A good one. Bye.